Hello, crew. I hope you all had, if you, if you do celebrate Thanksgiving, wherever you may live, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. If not, then I hope you had a great week. And this morning, we have the 22 Jeep Grand Wagoneer, and we have Patrick uh, operating the camera as usual. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, folks, for tuning in live if you're here, and uh, those filtering in will appreciate that. I have some questions that we prepared from Instagram. Folks who asked me early on, uh, uh, you can follow me there, at Miles Per Hour. TikTok, same thing, at Miles Per Hour, just like this. And no bees for us, please. The bee was just buzzing around Patrick's ear. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, I wanted to thank Emilio. He's a new patron member. Thank you so much, Emilio. Wanted to give you a shout out. Thank you for supporting the channel. Channel And um, someone else had just rejoined. Patrick, do you have it there? I don't want to forget. Jose. 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 Riva de Neda. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jose, for rejoining as a supporter of the channel. Guys, if you want to help me out, I'd super appreciate it. Become a patron. It's just patreon.com slash miles per hour or YouTube memberships. You know how to do that. Ed Star said hello. Ed Star, thank you so much Seattle. for joining. I missed you, dude. Haven't seen you in a while. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into the questions. If we have any already being asked, if not, then we'll do the Instagram questions. First question, Gamer Jang. Off-road uh, capability. Capability for off-roading. Um, let's see, so this is a Jeep, and so therefore it needs to be trail rated and needs to be capable off-road. And so they give all of the Grand Wagoneers a four-wheel drive system, a genuine four-wheel drive system with a two-speed transfer case. And it has uh, several different off-road drive modes. It's got a rock crawling mode. It has a sand mode, sand slash mud mode. It's got a snow mode for uh, those climates. And it has an air suspension system that can raise up 3.6 inches that gives this vehicle two feet of water fording capability. So yeah, it may just look like a big luxury SUV, but it's a Jeep, so it still has to be able to do off-roading. So this one definitely can. I would argue this is the most capable of the full-size, certainly American full-size luxury SUVs. First question from, let's see. Dylan, hey Dylan, how you doing? Um, it's eight over there, Tasmania and stuff. Uh, oh, wow. Said, what's the trim level on this one? Uh, 8 p.m. in Tasmania. Thank you so much for joining in, Dylan. Um, so this is the Series 3. So this is the range topper of the Grand Wagoneers. And if you weren't sure, there's a little badge right here on the back of the seats in the front that says Series 3. And also on the trunk, there's another two badges that say, well, this one says uh, Quadra Drive 2, but this one over here says Series 3. Quadra Drive 2 is their four-wheel drive system. That's our, that's I uh, just donated. Oh, thank you, Ed. Uh, he wants to see the engine. Engine, we can do that. Easy peasy. So, all Grand Wagoneers get a 6.4 liter Hemi V8. The regular Wagoneer gets a 5.7 liter V8. So, we got the 6.4. Man, this thing makes an amazing noise. I will start it up for you. Makes 472 horsepower and 455 pound feet of torque connected to an eight-speed automatic gearbox. And as I just said, sends power to all four wheels. It is a permanent four-wheel drive system. But yeah, let's let's fire it up. What's, what's the price? On this one? The price, for Grand Wagoneers start about $90,000. Um, the regular Wagoneers start significantly less expensive, but this one, the Series 3, with a few other options like the rear seat entertainment package, is $110,000. Wow. A lot of money, but yeah. the last Escalade That's I drove nice. was also, oh, the power running board yeah. coming down. Uh, the last Escalade I drove was 110. The last Lincoln Navigator I drove was 106. So they're all kind of like, they can get up there. So I'm going to start it up. Oh, yeah. It was good, right? Yeah. That's that heavy. That's that heavy music. Yeah. Thank you. 
Any better? Um, yeah. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Because I like sometimes I get like these audio issues. Mike's all plugged in. I think should be good to go. Can you hear us now? Can us now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Better. Okay. okay. Great. Um, so, Sorry, as I was saying, 22 inch wheels on the Series 3. As standard, you get 20 inch wheels on the Grand Wagoneer. And what's cool about these wheels is that they have these black noise pockets. So they actually filter out some of the road noise just based on the wheel design, just how they engineered the design of the wheels. And they're wrapped in Goodyear Eagle all season tires, 285 section at all four corners. So the car's a little dirty, guys. I've had it for a full week and uh, I've done all my testing with it. Do you think the. Uh... Quality of the interior is top notch considered Jeep is not known for luxury vehicles. Yeah, so worship kids. Thank you, worship kids. That is a great question. Yeah, we'll start question. like let's go in the back first. So this right. interior is incredible. This is I mean, first of all, someone asked, I, I think in, in an Instagram question, uh, if the vehicle smells like genuine leather. Okay. And it definitely does smell like genuine leather, and better still, it feels like genuine. This leather feel is un incredible. For an American SUV, I haven't feel, felt leather this good, and I say it in my review, since I was in some of the very expensive British luxury cars. I'm talking about a Bentley, I'm serious. The leather feels so good. They call this Palmero leather. So yeah, that feels amazing. The wood trim, it's a natural grain wood trim. And it looks amazing. It feels amazing. Um, what other details? I mean, just like the the aluminum uh, drive selector up there looks and feels really good. They went to a great deal of effort putting in nice touch points everywhere that you are going to feel in the second and even in the third row. Those leather seats back there feel just as good as they do in the front seats. And they've got like power recline function. There's no shorter, no fewer than 20 USB ports. 20 in this entire SUV, along with power or wireless smartphone charging, DC sockets, AC sockets. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice cabin, and uh, I'm not going to give away too much of my review. But it's it competing with the Escalade and competing with the Navigator, and even competing with some of the German vehicles. It definitely holds its own. We got uh, people from Pakistan. 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 All right, thank you for joining. Curtis Smith asks, "What are some luxury features in in the Grand?" Wagoneer. All right, well, so this one has the optional rear seat entertainment package. So it's got these two 10.1 inch screens. Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, so it's got two 10.1 inch screens. Yeah, you can watch Prime Video, you can watch uh, Hulu, you can watch Netflix. Uh, this one has, um, or they all as standard get this rear climate setup. And so you've got this uh, 11 inch screen or something like that back here uh, for the rear passengers with heating and ventilated seats on this Series 3 model. Um, other features, I mean, it's just got like huge, huge console for storage. I mentioned the USB ports in the back seats. You have power reclining rear seat backs. So these are just manual recline. Oh, you can see that. But those, they, they power recline with buttons back there. And uh, let's see, other details. We'll go to the front. Yeah. So on the Series 3, you get the Macintosh 20. Awesome India, by the way. Damn, yeah, All right, dude, we got good today. representation globally yeah. here today. I love it. Cool. Uh, 23 speaker Macintosh sound system is standard on the Series 3. Um, so, like, the, it's got 1375 watts. It's a pretty great sound system. I'm going to definitely put it on par with uh, Cadillac's AKG reference sound system that they have in the Escalade. Um, you've got tons of screens, you've got a passenger display here. Which, let me oh, hang this is it? Oh, yeah, let me pull it up. So. Oh, cool. So now you have a passenger display, and what's cool about this is it, they oriented the screen towards the passenger, so the driver is not going to get distracted by that screen. Um, it's just going to show up for the passenger. This Uconnect 5 system is really good. You've got this secondary screen down here just for your front seats and for your seat massage. So you got massage for the front seats. And if you're not using it, and let's say you want to store some valuables back here, 
Oh, the screen cool. pulls up and away, and that's where your wireless charging pad is, and six more USB ports. So that's a really cool feature. And if people don't know about it, then yeah, you can stick some stuff back there when you're leaving the car that you didn't want to be you don't want to be out of sight. And there's also a refrigerator in the front compartment here, so you can cool down some beverages for like uh, camping trips and things like that. But yeah, uh, lots of great features. Digital rearview mirror is in this one, so you can kind of see through the cabin effectively straight out the back. Question: mm. Do you think Jeep will have the old school world? What uh, exterior oh, panel on this? So Aaron the, asked that. That's, that's a great question, Aaron. The faux wood panels. I think we That'd all cool. we all want to know that because, like you know, the the I'm just thinking mostly of the the '80s Wagoneers, uh, which this vehicle, by the way, has one of the craziest running histories. So it was built from '63 to like '91, from '63 to '91 in one generation one generation of a vehicle that's the longest in u.s history um and during that time they added things like faux wood panels and yeah of course i think we'd love to see that for now you're definitely getting plenty of wood trim on the inside of the car i don't know if they'll add the wood panels i would be surprised if they don't do some sort of special edition with faux wood panels on the exterior because that's just so iconic in the wagoneer i think it would actually even make the exterior look better robert asks is this uh, suv a bargain compared to the escalade and navigator bargain is Bargain's hard to say. So I, I do have a full review coming out on this vehicle, so I'll leave kind of my conclusion for that, but I'll just give you the price breakdown again. The Wagoneer starts, a Grand Wagoneer, sorry, starts at just under $90,000. The Escalade starts just under $78,000, and the Navigator starts at seventy-six. dollars So those are a lot less expensive to start, but again, the, the most recent Escalade I drove was 110 just like this one is fully loaded fully loaded and the last navigator I drove was 106 fully loaded fully loaded so i mean if you add on options to either of those vehicles that i was comparing it to they're kind of all around the same territory and then at that point you start to look at hey how nice is the interior of this versus the fully loaded escalator navigator and it it definitely holds its own again I'll, I'll save my conclusion for the review another question what is the difference between the uh, grand wagoneer and normal the normal Wagoneer is not going to have the four-wheel drive system as standard. It's not going to get the 6.4 liter V8. It gets the 5.7 liter V8. And it definitely doesn't have all these nice luxuries. Um, doesn't have the nice wood trim. It doesn't have all the screens. It doesn't have the feel of these Palmero leather seats. It doesn't have like power reclining seats or power folding seats in the back. Um, there's a lot of features that the Wagoneer doesn't have, but you still get the look. XR asked, how about a wood grain wrap? Oh, if, if they could do that, I mean, I'm sure they could. I think I've seen like, you know, fake wood grain wraps. That might be okay, but I feel like you need the, Ed, I feel like you need the yeah. dimension of the wood kind of sticking out from the side of the car to really sell it on it. So I would like to see, you know, if we're looking at the profile. How, how much does like, this uh, like, SUV again? What's it? How much uh, is it? This one as tested is 110. 110. To start, 110. it's just under 90. But I want to see like wood strips kind of just running along the side here. The metal. Uh, yeah, metal like uh, borders, like the chrome borders, something like that. Like I feel like that you got to sell it. Cause the Grand Wagoneer is such history. Again, built since the 60s, um, with a gap there for the Commander, which sucked. But uh, but yeah, I feel like it's just got to embrace the wood paneling. Even if they just went between the door panels, right? Like there, there, just like maybe down low, the wood panels would look so cool. Uh, Curtis Smith asked, uh, how many more cars do you have? This is 472 and 455, so that's class leading power. The Escalade's 420, the Navigator's 440, so this makes another chunk more than those two. Gamer Jang has off-road, oh, I think we talked about We talked about, about yeah, we talked about off-road capability already. It has a permanent four-wheel drive system, two-speed transfer case, air suspension to raise it up. It's got, it's got the off-road goodies. Roxy asked, this or the 2021 Dodge Durango? Yeah, so the Durango is, oh yeah, sorry. The Durango is definitely more of a standard Wagoneer rival. Like uh, the the Durango is, is got not as nice of details as this green Wagoneer. It's gonna, be, again, be more in line with the regular Wagoneer. So, you know, if you're just giving me like, hey, pick one, I would definitely take this. I think the Durango looks better on the exterior, but I think the interior of this one just blows it out of the water. Let's see, uh, fuel economy, Aaron. 
15 combined from 13 city and 18 highway. It's a 6.4 liter NAV8. You can't, there's not a whole lot you can do with that. Let's see, uh, they want to see the trunk space. The trunk space? Sure. All right, so you hit this button on the right, and the trunk's going to pop on up. And I just have my car seat base for my daughter in here and a golf club. But uh, so you've got all this space behind the third row. You just hit this, these two buttons here and it'll power fold down the third row. And if those headrests were up, it would automatically fold those down. Awesome. And then to fold down the second row, you just hit the same, or these two buttons just in front of those and sends them down. That one was slid a little further forward and so it kind of whacked into the, the screen, but they do fold flat as you can see of that right seat there. You can power raise up the third row with these two buttons, but you have to go manually lift up the second row. You just lift up on the seat and it comes up pretty easily. But yeah, there's, there's, this is class leading cargo space too. Grandma's hood ass. I love that name. Does it ride smooth? <laughs> Grandma's hood wants to know if it rides smooth. Yes, thanks to adaptive dampers and an air suspension system, it rides very smooth, Grandma's hood. Another question from Instagram from Shappy. Is the mileage and material quality up to par with the German vehicles? So mileage and material quality. So mileage is definitely gonna be less. So like the X7, for example, a smaller vehicle, uh, doesn't have the interior capacity that this one does. Uh, I think gets, I think 22 combined MPG from its V6. Uh, if you get step up into the X7 M50i, you're looking at kind of the same 15, 16 miles per gallon. So not much better when you're talking a lot of power. Uh, the material quality, I definitely think is is on par with, with all the, the American luxury vehicles I was mentioning, the Escalade, the Navigator, and the German luxury vehicles, seriously. Um, when, and I know someone's, I think Cameron asked for the Creek test, Tyler asked for the Creek test, so we gotta do that, let's do the Creek test. Yeah. Oh, someone, someone asked about the color of the paint. This paint color is, shoot, I forgot the name. It's in my review, but I, I can't, it's a, I know it's an extra 600 bucks. Ugh. I'll put it, I'll make sure it's in the description of this video, guys. So even though I can't remember off the top of my head, it will be in the description. I wanna say Ruby, but it's, I know that's not true. Velvet red, that's Velvet what it red. is. Okay. Velvet red metallic. I yes. like the color for sure. Aaron, there is a panel. Yeah, so panel roof here and even the third row gets their own oh, wow. sunroof. Oh, that's cool. We'll show that. Okay, so we gotta do the creek test. So we're gonna try it out here. I'm gonna turn off the engine just so we can hear this better. There's some give, a little creek. There's some very small creeks up top here in the center. Shockingly, like, okay, so you got a little so bit of a creek over here. But honestly, like, that's not bad. And I, I always expect when you're pressing on wood that you're going to get some creeks. Again, thin, a thin piece of wood is just going to have that give. But I just wish there wasn't all this gloss black because uh, when I do the creek test, you're going to see the smudges. Um, Aaron said, are you going to do the water bottle test? But that's going to be Yes, that will definitely, the big bottle test is coming in the review and I'll have a TikTok video of that for sure. Another question from Instagram. Do the seat pillars look better in person? Hmm. Yeah, so let's go look at the profile. Yeah. Who asked that? Uh, Aaron. Okay, Aaron, let's let's go swing over here to the okay. profile test. You got to kind of just take it in and decide if they look better in person. Oh, yeah. And I'll be honest, I... I don't Looks like the profile of yeah. this vehicle. It's kind of <laughs> weird. Because here's the thing. So the classic Wagoneer, you've got these straight cut lines up top on the windows and on the bottom. Here they kind of curved it. And there's something out of the mix of the straight and the curve. It looks like a U. Yeah. It's weird. It's kind of weird. So I don't like the C-pillar much at all. Um, yeah, the, but the, the thing I will say, though, is when you're inside the vehicle, you really appreciate these big windows because you can see out of it so well. I, you would not think a giant SUV like this, certainly when you get in the Escalade or you get in the Navigator, you definitely can't see out of that the way you can see out of this one. So that is a huge benefit. But the C pillar design and the B pillar design are just kind of kind of weird, kind of strange. Sorry, man. You're killing us today. Thank you so much. Awesome. Oh, again. Uh, thank uh, so you. What's going on with the huge headrest? <laughs> 
Dude, you know what's funny, Ed? Like, a friend of mine, uh, he, like, the first thing he said when he saw this vehicle, he saw the inside, he's like, oh, that's a huge headrest. And they're so thick. You gotta, okay, um, yeah, I let's gotta shove go them back here. Oh, let me raise up this seat so you can actually see. But yeah, the headrest is so thick. It's oh, yeah. basically <laughs> as thick as the pillar here. Oh, wow. The pillar is, oh, yeah, that's pillar true. is that stuff. thick. Pillar's, uh, let me show you. Hang on. All right, so the pillar is this thick and the headrest is <laughs> yeah, quite about the same, same about the same. same thickness. Ed, I don't know why it's so thick. Um, this can't just be for crash protection. This is just a super thick headrest. And granted, yes, it adjusts like you can raise and lower the headrest and it can pop out a bit. Um, does it have vents maybe? Ooh, it, you know what it does? So on Probably each side does. of the headrest, here, check this out. So on each side of the headrest, oh, you can, you can bend it over, kind of like an airplane oh, yeah, seat, yeah. Oh, I see, to see, just kind of yeah. meld around your head. Oh, cool. But that accounts for this much of the headrest. Why is this thing so big? I don't know, but that's a funny and very well spotted question, Ed. I don't know why they're so big. <laughs> Actually, someone asked, um, can you increase the ride height? Yes. Can so you, see that you right want to see that? Yeah. All right. So let me just raise up the air suspension. I'm going to turn oh, on the Close the door. Other side. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let me go do that. So right now it's just sitting at its normal height. You can lower it to access height. So I'll try to show you the whole range of it. Okay. So we'll go down to access height and then we'll raise it up. That's not the problem. So yeah, the are so good. All right, so. Down to access height. Okay. So it'll take a couple minutes. Uh, the front goes down the end. Uh, the yeah, so it'll usually do, like most air suspensions, they do one side, then the other. So let's see. It'll let me know when it's finished, when we're at full access height. We are at access height. So this is as low, as a slammed as it goes. So if you step back, just step back to show the profile, because it's, it's kind of crazy seeing something this long yeah. sit this low. It definitely looks a little more wagon-like, right? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny. All right, so now let's go up to the full height. So I've got to go into four-wheel drive low to do that. So go to neutral, pull the four low button. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you guys hear us now? Is it better? Well, guys, can you hear me? And are we good on audio? Yes? Okay, cool. All right, All right so back. step back again, because I'm yeah. raising it up. Oh, yeah. Right. I raised it up to the full height right now. Now it's, now it's big, right? Like, yeah. Now I actually have a step down, and now the running board actually makes sense. But, like, okay, so you see it at this height, and you're like, okay, I can actually see this vehicle going off-road. Because you go, you drop down low, and it's like, it has some serious ground clearance. I think it's... 11, no, no, 10 inches of ground clearance. And that's pretty significant for a full-size SUV to have that kind of ground clearance. So I'm like, I'm all about the air suspension system. It works really well. And now you feel kind of cool getting into it because it's all big. Do friends have asked, is there an eight-seater version of this? Yes, so instead of the captain's chairs in the second row, you that can one. choose to have a bench seat. In the Wagoneer, the bench is standard. In the Grand Wagoneer, the, the, the bench is actually an option, which is interesting. But yeah, that would get rid of the console, and I think they would they would have to get rid of the uh, the screen right there in between the center. So I, this is definitely nicer. I love some great ones. Oh, wow, we got some one good too. representation cool. today. We had uh, cool. we had Africa, we had uh, we had Pakistan, Turkey, India. Where else we got? Um, Trappy asked from Instagram, was this affected by the recall? Yeah, so there was an airbag deployment issue on Grand Cherokees, Grand Cherokee L's and the Wagoneer. So this would technically have fallen within that. Now I get my vehicles directly from Jeep through their fleet management companies. If you want to learn more about that, guys, watch my 100,000 subscriber special. I explained this whole thing. Um, but, so they've already vetted this vehicle. They made sure that that software update, because that's all they required, it was just a software update, was patched into the vehicle. Now, if they start doing over-the-air updates, which they haven't done yet, when they start doing over-the-air updates, you won't have to like bring your vehicle back into a dealership they would just do the over-the-air update overnight. You'd wake up and all that, that glitchy stuff would have been fixed. If it's a software thing, not a hardware thing, which it was in this case. So it wasn't a crazy recall. 
it was a concerning one, you know, for the airbags, but when they fixed it, it's fine. Dylan, I did not forget about your question. How are the paddles? The paddles? Yeah. Uh, there are none. Yeah. yeah so there. I was gonna say. Yeah. So no paddles on the steering wheel. I will show you. So this is really funny, and you'll see this in my review. Uh, your gear changes are these little toggles right here. So you got minus and plus for your manual operation of the gear changes, um, and it's not responsive at all. So you'll see that in my review. But that's not, it's not a performance vehicle. You do think 6.4 V8 and it'd be kind of fun to do some manual changes. You just have to be very, very patient. Any special features in this car? Um, the screens are definitely, oh, I gotta close the door to actually load yeah. the suspension that you got here. The screens are definitely a special feature in this vehicle. And, sorry, I'm just taking it out of four-wheel drop low and I'm bringing it back down to the normal height. Screens are a feature. I think that, ooh, let's go up to the passenger side. I just want to show this one. Hello from Indonesia. Indonesia? All right. That's cool. So this one's cool. So first of all, you've got the fam cam system. So you drag this down and you can now look into any of the second or third row seats and you can kind of zoom in on this screen to any of the seats, which is pretty cool. Is it glaring? Yeah, it's totally good. Okay, can we put let's, uh, let's close up the bit. sunshade so you don't get as much glare on the screen. Seat Francis, yes, there is an eight-seater seat version. Yes, so that you can get a bench seat in the second row instead of having the captain's chairs that we have here. Uh, a little better. Oh. A little better? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so this fam cam system just like minivans, you can oh, kind of wow. zoom in on oh, any of the seats. That's cool. So you see it pops up on the right screen, like I want to be the back left, back, back left seat. Now I can show it. The second row right seat, and it shows up there. So that's a cool system. I like that. That is cool. Um, Especially for kids. The surround view camera system is also on this vehicle as standard. And what I like about this one is it will take over the whole screen, the whole 12 inch display, with just the backup view. So again, you have great visibility in this vehicle and I would call that a, its own like special feature, but if you aren't trusting it, you've got your, your uh, digital rear view mirror, plus you've got this big backup camera system, you've got blind spot monitoring, you have rear cross traffic alerts. And what was the other thing I wanna show? Oh yeah, so if you pull this down and we go to, oh no, not here, we'll go to vehicle, controls. You can fold down the third and second row headrest from here. So show the second row, I just wanna like, show it just popping down boom and the third row they're already folded right. but it's a cool, cool. It's, it's a cool shot so if you don't have anyone in the the back seats and you want more visibility that's like this car is key for visibility suv i should say you've got off-road pages too so you can look into if you are going off-road you've got all these additional you can see the transfer case you can see the auxiliary uh, gauges your pitch and roll angles which uh, off-road mode you're in. I was not that. <laughs> what was the that? Jeep, the Jeep. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's, yeah, so that's not us. But um, yeah, and then how high your suspension is. So these are all really cool features. Um, someone asked, um, is it safe? It, is it a safe car because Jeep Wranglers are not highly safety rated? Uh, I don't know if this one's been crash test rated yet. And in fact, I think when it gets over a certain weight, I think over 6,000 pounds, which this is, I don't think they have to crash test rate them. So I don't know if they're going to, or if they have already, but I do know it's got plenty of airbags. Oh, that's so strange. I didn't notice that. Wow. Yeah, this screens. is the second screen, so. One right here, one right here, one right here. One right here, one right in here. front of the driver. Oh, that if you one? count this as a screen, that is a that's screen. five, wow. six, seven, eight. Wow. Eight wow. screens. Uh, Liberty Walk as price, 110. Yeah, so 110, 430 as tested, and this is fully loaded, guys. You loaded. can't really get much more loaded up than this. Uh, the starting figure for the Green Wagoneer is 90. Wow. Um, someone asked to, what color options can you get? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head all the different colors. I know you can get in white, you can get in black, you can get in gray, you can get in this red. Um, and I think there's also a dark blue. D. Francis asks, is this over the Cadillac? Mm, yeah, you're gonna have to wait to watch my full review. Now that you're inside, I think it's probably a good time to actually hop into the back seat. Yep. Let's go for a drive.
Yeah, so I will do a comparison of this to the Escalade and to the Navigator, and I will just, I'll mention the Germans, but again, the Germans like the X7 and even the GLS are not the same size as this Grand Wagoneer. This is a very, very big, very much full size free row. How's the driving position on this? Excellent. So there's a lot of tilt and telescope on the power steering rack and power adjustable steering rack and the seats are super comfortable. You can, they're 24 way adjustable. So you will definitely find a good uh, position for yourself at the wheel. It feels heavy. That's crazy. The weight? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a big, this is a big body on frame SUV. That's another uh, thing to mention for off-road uh, usability. The body on frame gives the the vehicle more flex when off-roading. Dylan asks, what's your thoughts on the Rivian R1T? I'm really, I really want to drive it so bad. I wish the PR department would answer my emails because I've been trying, man. I've, I've been asking. Yeah. I've been trying it so I hard. I tried to and stuff. My friend works for them, man. They're super secretive and closed doors. I actually ran into a guy who worked for Rivian and I like gave him my car and I said, hey, you know, is there any chance I could get behind the wheel of one? He's like, I'm not the PR department, but I'll, you know, hand over your card and haven't heard anything from them. So it'll hopefully, happen. It'll happen. It'll, it'll happen. happen. But yeah, so my thoughts on it looks great. Yeah. Uh, have no opinions on how it drives because I haven't been able to do that yet. What's the horsepower again? For 472. 472. And 455. The 5.7 liter V8 that, that you get in the regular Wagoneer makes like 390, I think. So this is a big bump up. How do you like the steering wheel? Feels great. The leather again, this Palmero leather that's yeah, like throughout the cabin. Nice, actually. It feels super nice. I love the wood trim in the wheel. And uh, there's not too much gloss black. Uh, better than the Range Rover? Oh, that's tough. Well, now that there is a three row Range Rover, that will start to enter the conversation. I don't know if it's better than the new Range Rover. I haven't driven that yet. I've seen it. Um, but I will say, this cabin is going to be hard to beat. The, the comfiness of these seats, the look and feel of this wood, pretty darn good and the ride quality is also excellent the air suspension and the adaptive dampers so i don't know I, I have no firm opinions on that yet because i haven't haven't driven the new 22 or 23 now range rover uh you said it had front seat massages right yes oh, that's great yeah, you got five different choices of your front seat massage for these two passengers they said floor it <laughs> floor it Pickup, and it sounds good. Yeah. It sounds really good. And that was in auto mode. There's also a sport mode. Uh, how's the thr throttle response? So that in auto mode is sluggish, but if you go into sport mode, the throttle response is a little quicker. Uh, yeah. That sounds really nice for, a, wet, for a net <laughs> SUV. Yeah, it sounds really yeah, good, man. Good. Yeah, I can't can't get enough of that 6.4 V8. Not sure. How sure how good you could uh, hear the sound but the sounds pretty good yeah it's really good guys static s are they discontinuing the dodge v8 yeah so they're probably on their way out um environmental restrictions from the epa is and and the governmental agencies are really restricting that in the u.s so that's everyone right yeah the, everyone's gonna be affected fans. by that so we it's just a matter of time before you can't get a You can't get an NAV8. It sounds this good. Now, in the short term, they'll start. Uh, they'll, they'll be giving them electrification boosts, um, assists that will lower the fuel economy, or, or like improve the fuel economy rather, lower the emissions, and help extend the life of these engines. Um, and of course, they've been doing turbocharging for a long time, and that's that's helped quite a bit. But yeah, the the V8 is is dying. How does it handle for a huge SUV? Uh, you'll have to see that in my review. I don't have any good options to uh, to show you handling here, but it's um, it's about what you'd expect. Okay, it's a huge SUV, six thousand pounds, and the body on huge, frame, a huh? lot of lot of uh, above the yeah. wheel weight. It it doesn't handle well. Uh, you do a launch. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I sort of missed my opportunity there to yeah. do a launch. I didn't want to scare the cyclist. But if there's a another light that'll have a chance to do a launch, I will do that. Overall, I do like you said, the interior is really nice, man. Right? Yeah, and it's, it's also like how quiet nice. is there yeah. in this cabin? It's pretty it's darn true. quiet. Really quiet. I will have a launch for my test drive. Don't worry about that. I'll have a, a night drive. I'll even have a POV ride for you. So you'll get to see launches. And I even do one in, at the beginning of my review. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so I'll note to do it earlier than this. Yeah. But, yeah, but we'll flip it around and go back so we can avoid that. Are we back, guys? I think because it got disconnected, so. Yeah, so we're, we're – I thought we were stopping before the yeah. point where it gets disconnected. I guess not. Are we good, guys? Can... Oh, we'll make the U-turn in just a sec and we'll get out of here. Oh, does it have a head? Oh, I think we're back. It does have a head-up display, yes. yes. Okay. Man, there's a lot of screens, man. Like, <laughs> Tons lot, of screens. Man. Tons of screens. You also check this out. The turning radius is really good. For a huge SUV like this, look at that. Oh, yeah. Holy. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's wow. a pretty great turning wow. radius. And then... Oh, so good. I'm going to miss that noise. I'm very much going to miss that noise. But are you guys as excited about the electric Dodge as I am? Like, they're going to make an all-electric vehicle. I feel like if Dodge does something... Okay, we're back. Back? Yeah. All right, guys, sorry about the disconnection. Lake Noah asks, is the back or front seat more comfortable? You tell me, how's that back seat feel? I think, obviously, the front's going to be more comfortable. Well, it's got more adjustments. Yeah. So you got massage, and you've got 24-way adjustments up in the front. So I think it's going to be a little more comfortable. Uh, the back seat feels good. Um, I'm 5'7", so um, I have plenty of room for a comfortable. And I, just for a reference point, guys, I was able to fit behind this seat, that seat, and in the third row, all just fine at six foot. So it's it's you've got space in this SUV, that is for sure. AJ asks, does this share the same info screen as the new Hummer EV? No, the Hummer EV, well, it, it'll, it no. Well, first of all, the Hummer EV is a GM vehicle. And so GM and, and Stellantis are very much independent uh, automakers. And so, no, we'll have nothing in common with the Hummer EV's uh, infotainment. Um, what are the qualities on the display? 4K, 1080p. Uh, it's a good question. I don't. I don't know if they. It's pretty clear. I mean. I mean, it's super clear. I don't know if they do those those resolution readouts. I've never seen that on a spec sheet. Four K, you know, infotainment. I've never seen that. But. But it's clear though. It's, it's super clear. clear more than other cars I've seen. Yeah, some other ones they get like either grainy or just the colors don't pop. This one's got great colors. And oh, let me go to the navigation system. Took a second to boot up, but. When it's up, it's quick to That's respond. Clear. Yeah. And yeah, it looks really good. Uh, the muffin, are you talking about the back storage wise or? Yeah, so how much storage does it have? So I know that the cargo space is, it's best in class. I think it's like, I don't think it's something like 110 cubic feet of space. It's, it's massive. It's more than that actually, it's like 119 cubic feet of space. It's a ton of room with all seats folded. Behind the third row, I don't remember the, t the number off the top of my head, but it, it will definitely be in my review, guys, so look for that. Just can't get it up that V8. <laughs> That's pretty quick. But also, I mean, just the ride quality. Yeah. The ride quality is so go. good. And the cabin is so well insulated. They've got a laminate for the, both the front and rear windows and an acoustic glass windshield. Oh, definitely. This is a road trip car. For oh, sure. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. It's like, yeah. This yeah. would be an amazing road trip vehicle. The only problem, again, is the fuel economy, 15 combined. Um, it has eight touch screens. Yeah. Or eight, seven, eight, seven, seven. Eight screens if you count yeah. the digital rear view. Oh, mirror. that's right. Eight, yeah, that's right. Um, towing? Almost 10,000 pounds. Wow. So it is best in class towing as well. And it cruises well on the highway, like more road trip stuff. It's got the adaptive cruise control system. 
So it'll keep that following distance from the vehicle in front of you, and it will even kind of stay in the center of the lane. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's got those features. QLE, GLS, X7. Yeah, so it's not, it doesn't handle anywhere close to as well as those vehicles because they are unibody vehicles. They're not body on frame vehicles. Um, it, and the, the material quality, as we've already discussed, is very much on par. It's really, really good, and in some cases, it's better. And the technology is right there as well. The Uconnect 5 system is excellent. All the different screens that you have, the massaging features, the passenger display, it's right there with all the competitors. Um, how's the stability on corners? Uh, it's, it's, again, what you'd expect. The vehicle doesn't feel like it's gonna tip over, but it's not a handling vehicle. Not, this is, again, nowhere near as confident in a corner as an X7, for example, or a GLS. It's just not this car's bag. Yeah, Dante Alexander, yes. Around 10,000, you said, for towing? Ten, around 10,000 pounds, just under. It's like 98, okay. 70. 98, 100, yeah, that's what I said. The Muffin uh, said, I might be keeping my expedition longer, but this is good. Yeah, definitely, this is really nice. I this is a super nice SUV. Do you have any other uh, questions? Otherwise, we're probably going to wrap this one up. Um, yeah, well, you have Amazon Prime here, so I'm pretty sure you, if you hook up... Um, you can definitely watch movies on the yeah. back. Um, I well, think... it's off right now, but yes. What is he asking? Um, can you watch Netflix in the back? I'm yes, yeah, so, so yeah. Netflix is actually a, like, it's already a, oh, really? an app where you just hit, click in, you sign into Netflix, and oh, okay. you can yeah, watch it. Yeah, that's Hulu. Um, is it good for above six feet people? Uh, yes, there's yes, plenty definitely. of room. There's tons of plenty headroom of and room. leg room, for sure. I, w I wouldn't say, like, if you're, like, 6'3", you're probably not going to fit super well in the third row behind another 6'3 person, but you can fit. Maximilian, how you doing, man? Hey, guys. Thanks, Max, for joining. Yeah. Uh, any more questions, guys? Yeah, 100K on the wheels, yep. <laughs> Pretty much. That's that's how much this costs. Kind of crazy. Yeah, it's it's a lot of money, but again, you are getting a lot for your money. It's yeah. it's pretty crazy. All the features this vehicle has. You think something similar like this would will be compared to like uh, how much does the Escalade? Escalade seventy seven. Navigator seventy six. This one starts at ninety. So again, that that sounds like okay. It's twelve thousand dollars more expensive than the Escalade. Uh, it starts just under 90, so 89. So it's $12,000 more expensive to start than the Escalade, but if you add in the features that this has, 110 for this one, the Escalade was also $110,000. So it's not it's not crazy priced for what you're getting. You get a lot of standard features in the Grand Wagoneer. Uh, Maximilian asked, does it have Wi-Fi? Yes, it has a Wi-Fi hotspot. That's crazy. And if you missed it earlier, it has 20 USB ports. So 20? 20 USB wow. plus. Plus uh, wireless charging. Static guys, imagine if they put a Hellcat in this. Dude, that would be... I mean, uh, I mean the Hellcat all the things, please. Because, uh, yeah, because, I mean, talk about going out with a bang. That would be the way to go. Dantes asked, uh, looking forward to the POV on this one. Yeah, thanks, Dantas. Yeah, I will have, I'll have a test drive, I'll have a night drive, I will have a ride, and I will have my review, which is, of course, filmed the POV style. Uh, Miles is six feet, um, I'm 5'7". Plenty of room. There's, yeah. I mean, if you can see the headroom, obviously. Plenty of room. Yeah, there's tons of headroom, tons of leg room. It's very spacious, guys. Um, someone asked, what are your two favorite features on the car? Two favorite features. One, visibility. Yeah. Visibility, oh, which is the all-encompassing. It's the big windows. It's the digital review mirror. It's the blind spot monitoring. It's the big backup camera. Visibility is one of my absolute favorite features in the car. And the second is just going to be the leather. There, there's no part of me that... that or even like... A hundred, if it was $150,000, i would say, yeah, the leather feels really nice. It's just amazing. Those are my two favorite things. Actually, I said uh, Lincoln Navigator is better. I don't know. Black badge, the black badge, or what's it called? Black the label, black, black label's good, yeah. but the black label's also $106,000, and uh, I don't know if it's better, guys. Really? Yeah, right. you gotta watch my review to see see which one I think is best. 
Uh, how many miles can you get on a full tank? Uh, I cannot remember the size of this tank, but it gets 15 MPG combined. So, and uh, 18 highway. So, I don't know, if you took a long road trip and try to think what your range would probably be, not knowing the size of the tank, I can't can't list it off the top of my head, but um, just kind of do the math. If you if you just look up, you Google what, what the size of the tank is, you can do the math. Which one is better according to you? This, the Escalator Navigator. You're gonna have to watch my in-depth review that's gonna be coming out in about two weeks, guys. I will have an answer, a verdict for you on Thank that you one. Guys. And on Monday, I'm gonna have my review of the Mercedes-Benz EQS. So look for that one. Any more questions, guys? That's it. And thank you guys so much for joining. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And uh, yeah, please, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and, and share the videos. And let's spread the good word about miles per hour. Have a great weekend, guys. We'll see you next time. Oh, Ed Star said, uh, wait till you see the ground wagon here in Obsidian trim. Oh, the Obsidian. Bright white, simply beautiful. Yeah, the Obsidian trim is pretty cool because they black out all the details on it. Um, but you can get the vehicle in a different color than black. So yeah, the, the black contrasting details are pretty nice. And thank you again for your contributions. Super yes, appreciate it. Yes, cool, man. And, uh, and, and everyone too from Turkey, Yeah, guys, thank you for Pakistan. the global. It was the, crazy. The global representation That's today. Cool. Y'all are awesome. All right, bye guys. About to take off. Have a good one.